a woman in South Africa has a greater chance of being raped than learning how to read. The criminal justice system is failing to give rape victims access to justice, with a conviction rate in Gauteng sitting at 4%. When someone is physically or sexually assaulted, they are taken to a hospital to complete a J88 form. This form becomes empirical evidence in rape court cases. It is often the only evidence besides the verbal testimony of the victim. The J88 form is filled out by a doctor when a sexual assault has taken place. It is designed to record all physical injuries on the victim as well as the medical history. First, basic demographic information is filled out. Simple information such as addresses can be problematic in rural or township areas where addresses are informally understood. It also makes it difficult for the investigating officer to find the victim at a later stage. Then, a general examination takes place, noting height, weight and clothing. Clinical findings are meant to describe injuries to the body. Doctors indicate on sketches where there are bruises, cuts or lesions. Doctors sometimes leave this part out, thinking that only genital injuries are important for sexual assault. However, this can cause problems in court. For example, if a victim says she had a knife held to her throat and no evidence of a cut is documented, it could be taken as a discrepancy in her testimony. In Gauteng, women are three times more likely to have their case go to trial if they show signs of physical injury, and four times more likely if they have genital injuries. Doctors write in medical jargon, which becomes problematic when no medical professionals are present in court. 50% of trials move forward without a medical professional present. Next, the form asks for a description of the patient's emotional state. People can react in many different ways to trauma, ranging from being abnormally calm to crying hysterically. There is no one emotion indicative of whether or not an assault occurred. Next, clinical evidence of the presence of drugs or alcohol are asked for, and suggestions for how to fill out the form say that smelling alcohol or dacha is sufficient to fill it in on the form. The conclusion is a particularly difficult part of the form to fill in. Writing too much could create discrepancies in court between the testimony given to a doctor and the testimony given to the police. Writing too little, however, leaves the description open to interpretation in court. Doctors are often only able to write assault. When there is an alleged sexual offence, a detailed sexual and developmental history is asked for. This includes the date and time of the last time the patient had consensual sex, number of pregnancies, and when they started their period. Next comes the genital examination. Some rape survivors describe this part of the examination as a secondary invasion of the body. A detailed examination of all parts of the genitals is needed, partly to prove penetration. The doctor has to note how many fingers they can insert into the vagina and take a vaginal swab for forensic evidence. The form also has space for an anal examination and a penile examination in cases of male sexual assault. The form breaks down the victim into body parts, which are examined in isolation. Any mistakes or inaccuracies in this form will be enough for the defence to have it dismissed as evidence from the court leaving a victim with only their word as a proof of their rape. This form may be comprehensive in medico-legal terms, but it is a small part of a long journey a rape victim has to take if they want fair access to the criminal justice system.